everybody. Today I am painting. Um, I'm going to do this lesson in two parts, but I think it's going to be really fun for you. Um, I would do it in two, one part, but again, I'm not sure on the editing. So what we're going to be painting is this beautiful flower. Um, it's like a wild rose or it might even be a peony. Uh, and what I'm going to do is show you this exercise in, I think this is such a great way to level up your paintings in adding some interest and value and depth. So I'm going to paint, um, just a flat wash. And this is what I see in a lot of the paintings I am sent and asked, you know, what could I do different here to make it more interesting, to make it a little bit better. And so I'm going to show you um, how to just a really easy technique and exercise and how to make a huge difference in your paintings. Today will be part one. Tomorrow I will go in and show you how to level it up. I'm using this, which I really like. It's uh, a meat and watercolor paper. This is their 10 uh, by seven. It's 100% cotton, which I love. It's a little bit pricier than the um, Artisto that I usually share with you, uh, but I really love it. What I love about this too is this is a block. So for instance, today I'm going to be using quite a bit of water as I lay down this first glaze or first wash. And because it's a block, in case you don't know what a block is, a block is uh, where it's all sealed on each side. So when you're using a lot of water, you don't have to tape down your uh, paper and you don't have to worry as much about it buckling and things because it's all sealed it down on every side and then when I'm finished I'll just go around with a letter opener or a credit card or something and lift it up. So that's what I'm using. I've also got my little, uh, this is actually Meat and Two which I really love. Their ceramic products are fabulous. Uh, my two containers of water, one to wash, one to rinse and I think I think I will use, not that one, let's see, I want a little bit bigger brush today. Uh, let's see, where is my eight round? Here's my eight round. So I think I'm gonna use that one, um, and I'm gonna be wetting the paper, so I'll be doing wet and wet and wet um, on dry. This is just laying down, as I said, this first glaze, this first wash. Uh, if you'd like this drawing I sketched out here, um, I will send it to you. You can either email me, um, well, you can email me, and I will go ahead and send that to you. Today, I'm going to be using uh, my My Lang palette. Again, I'm using this right now because it is a little bit more affordable for me for how much I am painting. Um, and I'm going to be using, let's see, their color is Rose Red, which is a pinky color. Uh, if you're going to be using your Winsor Newton, you can use um, a Quinn Magenta. And I'll show you here, I'm gonna mix a really pretty blushy color. Let me go ahead and pick up that Rose Red. Again, if you're using Winsor Newton, just use your uh, Quinn Magenta is fine. If you really want it pinker, you can use the um, a little bit of Opera Rose in there. So I'm gonna make it quite a light value because in watercolors, remember, you always start light and build your layers to get darker, but you always start light. So let's go, I'm gonna turn this around so I can get access to that paint. Okay. I'm going to, and, and when I say I'm using a light value, um, it's just has more water than pigment. So it's probably, I'd say 70% pigment, 30%, I'm sorry, 70% water, 30% pigment. So it's very light, it's diluted, okay? Which is a light color, because we want to start light. And I'm using my eight velvet touch round brush today. So I'm gonna go in and just start coloring in some of the colors in the background. Now that's even still too dark a wash. So I'm going to a 
lighten that. I just want a hint of this color. And if you see, and when I'm going in and using this, I am um, leaving whites in here. See how I'm leaving some white spaces in here? Absolutely want to do that. I'm going to dilute that a little bit more. There we go. And just continue around, leaving white space. Let me add some more water. Just coloring in. So if you pick up this um, drawing from me, just go in and Fill in a lot of these just with this beautiful pink. That's a little bit darker than I really want, but that's all right, because I'm gonna spread it around. Now this has the lip of the, the petal kind of turns in on itself. So I'm leaving that white space. And while this is wet, I'm going to go in with just a little bit of my cad yellow, which is cad yellow in both Windsor Newton and my Lang, again, with a very light value. And go into the center here. You can let it bleed in a little bit with that, some of these pinks, and just put a light wash, okay? We'll get more definition as we build the layers. Picking up more of that pink. So I am leaving these two spots white because they are areas where the petal is turning inward. So I'm gonna leave those a little bit whiter And tomorrow we will go in and start adding darker values and some depth. There we go. Let's see. Oop, so that's a little darker than I want. Our tendency when we paint is to want to fill every single little area. I do have some varying values, but for the most part, they're all about the same. Now this petal here has the edge of it turning inward. So I'm going to not color that in. And same with this one. leaving a little bit of white in there, just like that. That's white, that's white. Uh, let's see here, what have we got going on down here? Kind of ad living here as I go. There we go. Picking up some of that paint. I'm really watering down that pigment that I've got there because I again I want this to be a very light just base wash like that there we go so except for those few areas where the the petal is turning in I basically just laid this wash down um, I'll go in here and do that. I'm just gonna use, you can use any green you want. I typically, my go-to green is a combination of Windsor Newton Sap and Olive Green. 
I want to use that cooler green because this is kind of a cool color. So let's just go in. Yeah, look how pretty that is. And add in some of that. It's kind of hard, it's interesting. It's kind of hard for me not to paint darkers and light hues. I just automatically do that typically, but I'm trying to show you something here. So that's why it was even, I didn't get quite that flat same hue all the way through, but there you go. So that's about all I'm gonna do. And then tomorrow when I come back, if you want to meet me this far, look at how kind of flat this looks. It looks a little uninteresting, it looks a little boring because all the hues, the values are basically the same. I did this a little bit, um, barely a little bit darker, but as you can see, this is all basically pretty flat. So tomorrow we will come back after you get caught up to this part, go ahead and just email me and I will send you this drawing. I'm trying to pick some of that up so it's a lighter value so you can really see the difference when we start adding in value tomorrow. And if you can learn how to do these values, I think this will really give you a huge head up on um, your painting. So I think what I might do in here is put a little bit of a value of a light orange. So I've got this orange here, very light, meaning a lot of water. I think I might just go in and add a little bit of that around, something like that. So still very light. All right, so that's gonna be about it for today. Um, tomorrow I will go in and start adding some darker values and let you see how important those darker values are in a painting, um, how they pull and bring forward different pieces and interest and um, that's about it. Okay, I will see you tomorrow, part two. All right, bye-bye.